the um, as you mentioned a uh, campfire tale so when you're young it's kind of obvious why you would be interested in these stories they're fantastic they're cool they're, and and they're scary but it really stays with people for some people it stays with them their entire lives like this strong belief in whether it's the chupacabra or whether it's you know mothman um what is the appeal of cryptids especially nowadays we see hear a lot about cryptids okay i think the appeal of cryptids is they're monsters who generally have more plausibility than what you know in a world that's increasingly based or, well, I say increasingly. Let's say <laughs> that the academic side of the world, the scientific side of the world, the materialist side of the world thinks that the world is becoming better known. Obviously, the past four or five years have shown me that <laughs> it's not a universally accepted thing. Uh, there's some people who don't feel that way. But in general, I think we're pushing towards more and more uh, certitude in, in science around a natural materialist world. And so these these are monsters that might exist. These are monsters that have a higher degree of plausibility than the you know ghosts or um, vampires, that sort of thing. You know, so uh, as a consequence, they become better stories to tell around the campfire. They become better companions to folklore. I, th I think in like, you know, when people say I saw a monster, if you say you saw Frankenstein's monster, I think people are generally going to disbelieve you. Right. You know, <laughs> but if you say you saw Bigfoot, you still get a monster story, but it's not nearly as implausible. Totally. Uh, you know what? I think another aspect of it, too, is like the well, uh, just one side would be like the historical cryptids, like the, the stuff that is supposed to be like the dinosaur that's living in the Amazon or like Nessie could have been like this some kind of you know, Paleozoic or whatever, you know, era dinosaur living in the lock or whatever. And I think there is that kind of like history aspect to like the cryptid thing that kind of, it always intrigued me. I always liked those kind of like historical accounts of like, oh, it was seen, you know, even like the, like the, the woodpecker that everyone claims to oh, yeah, see yeah, that yeah. doesn't yeah. exist anymore. You know, like I, I think that stuff's kind of, yeah. Was it ivory billed woodpecker? Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah. So um, I think the historical aspect of it is another like really intriguing well, side I mean, of it. I'm super skeptical, but when I go driving at night in the country, I, I still kind of hope to see a Bigfoot and to hit it with my car and kill it and <laughs> become rich and famous. Yeah. So, <laughs> Well, I think you actually kind of touched on it is that uh, we want to believe that there's something more out there, um, especially right now when everything is so – this is like a dumpster fire in the world. I mean it would be great if there was – like I said, a Bigfoot out in the country or here in central Texas if there was a goat man – wandering around that'd be kind of no you don't want goat man he's not a nice person <laughs> well if i see him from a distance in my car like i think i'd be pretty cool with him <laughs> uh what do you guys think is the best monster or even creep or fictional or not that's uh best suited for or best personifies halloween i'll go with the generic one um what's his name sam from trick-or-treat i mean little dude he does candy. have a pumpkin head Although pumpkin so does head. pumpkin head. Yes. <laughs> well, boy, pumpkin head's not a great flick. Uh, no, it's got, it's it's got Lance though. Hendrickson, right? That, it does. Yeah. Okay, yeah. So that gives it some points. Was it worth <laughs> performance? <laughs> well, I think I think uh, I, that one was delayed. I saw that one in the theater because I'm old. Um, <laughs> I, I remember, like, I read Fangoria, and I was like, oh, this movie looks good, Pumpkinhead. And then it was, like, a year or more before it actually hit the theater, and it only hit for, like, a couple of weekends. I still, So I enjoyed seeing it, but, yeah, it, it's, it doesn't hold up that well. Although I enjoy seeing <laughs> Rawhead Rex. That also doesn't hold up that well. It turns out I didn't have much discernment as a young man. But <laughs> <laughs> I think that's how we all got into the genre. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I recently saw um, Tammy and the T-Rex. Like last year, I saw the uh, unedited version. Because it, when it came out, it was PG-13, uh, actually tying back into Paul Walker because he's in it. But they wanted it to be a family-friendly movie. But when they – the studio wanted it to be. When they initially made it, it was a straight-up rated R, like, gore fest. So uh, that's the cut that I saw. And uh, it's horrible. But it's – a really really fun movie i mean it's paul walker talking he, uh, paul walker's brain and voice in an animatronic dinosaur I mean, <laughs> what more can you ask for <laughs> wow <laughs> and there Stop. and there you have the reboot of fast and the fury <laughs> <laughs> there it is. answers all our questions that's julia harris uh best creeper halloween creeper man that's tough that's tough. If we're going to go beastly, yeah, I'm going to go werewolves. Like, yeah, it's hard to get off werewolves and dog 
dog men, dog people. I like, I like. I, I, I can't help but think of Paul Walker in a in a reboot of Theodore Rex right now. So I, <laughs> I'm having a moment. <laughs> I, I kind of envisioned him as Gizmo Duck. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know what? I uh, I actually just listened to this episode recently, Blake. Uh, episode you did on Black Eyed Kids with Ooh, uh, with Jerry Drake. Jerry, yeah. yeah. Um, and it was something like, like you know, I'm old too, so I was a kid in the '80s, and that's when I was in all this stuff. And, you know, in the 90s, too. And I, you know, I a lot of people talk about black eyed kids now. And I'm like, I don't remember hearing about this. But it turns out it as popular as it seems to be. It didn't really come up until like 1997. Right. Something right. Like that. Right. Yeah. It's really, really new. It's weird. There's this sort of bias of the now of the present. Like, for example, have you ever heard the phrase, if it ain't broke, don't fix it? <laughs> yeah. How old would you think that was? It's, that sounds like old folk, like old folk saying to me. But would you believe that comes from the mid nineteen seventies? Wow. Damn. It's like weird. Really? It's weird. It's weird. It's like just like we just don't understand. I mean, like you really have to go look at the history of this kind of stuff. So, yeah, it's weird. So, but yeah, yeah, you're right. Like the, a lot of this stuff seems old. I mean, like like the Ape Canyon case sound, makes it feel like Bigfoot's ancient, but that was not really described as a Bigfoot case, and like. Really, until the Jerry Crew like footprint hoaxes in the 1950s, there wasn't any such thing as Bigfoot. Uh, this concept of Sasquatch was not about a giant hairy monster so much as it was about a giant tribe of Native Americans that people said they saw. Like the like like some of the natives described them as being more animal like, but like the whole thing with them being covered with hair was a, really a product of the Bigfoot sort of mashup of the 1950s. So um, I don't. I don't know, but I mean, like, I, it feels to me more like Bigfoot is a, is a social construct, you know. Um, that being said, um, the movies about it messed me up as a kid, and like, still, I think that shows my podcasting. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, like does it does it matter if they're real or not? They haunt me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, what is there talking about uh, movies that haunt you or stories that haunt you? What What do you think is the best Halloween story about? cryptids or creeps or monsters um i'm i don't know if it's a halloween story per se but i really like troll hunter i think that's oh troll, troll hunter's awesome. awesome yeah awesome. yeah troll hunter's great yeah that, that's such a fantastic serious take on the troll mythology right uh i i heard they were going to make an american like an english version of it and i never saw that materialize but i'm kind of happy i think it, it it works so well as a subtitled foreign film i'm very happy with that yeah, I think um, what's his name was attached to it. Uh, Christopher Columbus. Um, he was gonna. He at one point he was supposed to do it, which I guess it would be pretty neat. But I agree with you. Um, it's uh, only like now it's a gang of plucky kids against the. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. Exactly, exactly. Exactly. Which is entertaining in its own way. I would imagine. But if you're if you're proposing a a, a monster squad reboot, I'm listening. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that is such Absolutely. a great film. Yeah. yeah. Wolfman has nards. <laughs> <laughs> I have a rich tradition of watching Creature from the Black Lagoon uh, every Halloween. So that's 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 my go-to old school classic cryptid. What a great story. Schlocky but awesome. H hilarious theme music for every time you see the monster. Um but the more modern take and I don't know if you guys will agree if this is a cryptid or not because it's like a killer vine plant. It's in the ruins. Have you guys seen the ruins? I have seen that. I love yes. that movie. Yeah, I love it. And I think that's such a cool, creepy concept. And it's like, like perfect Kudzu, for... the motion picture. What... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's 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 it hits on different levels. You know, it it there's like a whole like it kind of kind of infect you uh, aspect to it. And I think yeah, I think it's a super great like change of pace uh, for like Hollywood ha Halloween uh, cryptid movie watching night. No, it's a lot of fun. Um, I was expecting something more akin to a um, little shop of horrors. So <laughs> it totally threw me off. Seymour! <laughs> um, I see, Blake, you have uh, The Legend of Boggy Creek down here. Um, I, I've seen the first one. It's a little slow in retrospect, but um, I've never seen the sequel. Like, And I always wondered, <laughs> how could they how could they make a sequel out of that? Have, have any of you guys seen The Legend of Boggy Creek 2? I've seen that. There's, I think there's two sequels. And one wow. of them was done on Mystery Science Theater, um, which says a lot about its quality. Which is hilarious. One yeah, of my yeah, favorite episodes. Yeah. Um, I, I have only seen that one in the original. And and they just did a 4K restoration of the original. It looks really good. 
I, you know, so I, I, on my Patreon feed, I do a, a sub podcast I call Big Footage, where I go back and watch <laughs> <laughs> Bigfoot movies and give reviews. And oh. uh, I, I, I haven't done Boggy Creek yet, but I've, I've done um, some others. And what I've noticed is there's this recurring tendency to have like a sort of a guitar folksy kind of song going on during the movie. And Boggy Creek was sort of the progenitor of all that. And uh, there's this Crabtree song in there that will haunt you. And, and the, <laughs> the more these movies I watch, the more I become concerned that every one of them until I get into the 80s is going to have this feature. And it's not it's more of a bug than a feature. <laughs> so it didn't start with Deliverance. Right. No. <laughs>